Okay. Well, God bless you all. Praise God for all of you. And praise God for so many levels of the goodness of God. Here we are in a warm building, outside freezing cold. <laughs> really, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and the gospel that is burning in us keeps us warm inside as well. So let's open in prayer, and then we'll get going here. So precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, the very fact, Lord, that we know you, Lord God, and you have given us so many privileges and opportunities, Lord God, to know you better, Lord God, and I pray we've always taken advantage of those opportunities to get to know you better. Father God, so today here's another great and wonderful opportunity, Lord God, and I'm greatly humbled that, Father God, that I'm a part of your purpose and your plan, Father God. I thank you this day, Father God, for your children, both here and abroad, wherever they might be, Father God, that you are there for them, Lord God, that you take care of your own, Lord God, and that, Father God, we just thank you this day, Father God, that you're all we need on every level, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just pray today, Father God, that you are glorified, Father God, by all that we do and say and thank, Lord. And that, Lord God, that those, Lord God, who need to be lifted, you're there to lift them, Father God. So we just praise your mighty and holy and righteous name, that name that is life and that more abundantly, Father God. We just give you all the praise and glory, Father God, in your holy and righteous name once again, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Again, God bless you all. Every one of you, and I love you so much. We're going to get right to the scriptures, which is why we're here. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's truly a pleasure to spend time with all of you and to, of course, have the word of God before us, in front of us, in us, about us. The evidence of it is everywhere. We don't have to look very hard if you want to look. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy 30 and read verses 10 through 15. And my title, if you care to write anything down, it's going to be In My Mouth and In Thy Heart. Actually, In Thy Mouth and In Thy Heart. Forgive me for that slip up. Verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it afar off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither it is beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. If, that all, if, if that's all I were ever to say for the rest of this service, that's more than we can contain. Because look at the privilege we have that was written so many years ago that is applied right now, this very moment. That the word is and is definitely in our heart. And it is in our mouth. And it is everywhere. Because how else would anything be created without the word of the Lord saying so? So we praise God for that, that we are highly privileged, that we are able to put, pick up a book that has been protected for millennia, all the different bits and pieces that God had this put together and how protected it was and how many people gave their life for it. I can expound upon that the rest of the day, the rest of my life. I could, and the rest of you as well. But we are most thankful, and we are, I'm very honored to be able to even know the Lord God and, then, and to know anything about him. He has indeed given me life to do that. So carrying on, 14 obviously is my key verse, and we are going to go to a really tough one, Deuteronomy 29, so I know that so far. But anyway, what I am really aiming at is our privilege to know the Lord God and have his word so close to us and in us. 
that we are able to not only have it written in us and to be a part of us, and without it is nothing made, and that we don't live and move and have our being without it. In Deuteronomy 29, we're going to read verses 9 through 15 to begin with. Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, your officers, and with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us today, this day, before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. To me, that really got my attention. It really did. And I'm going to reemphasize that verse one more time because here we are, and we pray often for those we love. Yeah. We don't always see them. They may not be here, but what do we do? We love them as God loved us before we ever knew him. Before That's just incredible to me that he would consider us before we are even aware of him. And yet, here it says it right here, it just states it again. That the more we look, the more we're going to find. If you seek, you're going to find him. That's what's really great about God. He's never afar off. I'm going to emphasize that one more time in verse 15. But with him that standeth here with us this day, here we are today. We're with each other today. We're standing together. We have come here for a purpose to be in unity, to be in one accord, because we have to fight an enemy who is not going to give up. But we know that greater is he that's within us than he that is in this world. Yeah. And so we can take the word of God, which is written, and hold it up, and that's our standard against him. It is written. That's the way our Lord Jesus Christ defeated him in the wilderness. It is written. But with him that standeth here today, standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. So we're including everybody we love and everybody we care for, and in turn we have expanded our, our love for others. You know, we have other congregations we're associated with now. It gives us more people to care about and to pray for and to consider and to worship with, whether we're afar off or together. That's what's wonderful also about God. You know, whether we're here in the same building or whether we're not, whether we're in Africa, whether we're in India, whether we're in the Philippines, the United States, not afar off, look at how grand and how beautiful that God has planned all of this, and that's the way it works. That he's not, he's not limited, and that the gift of God, faith that has been given to us, that works by love, and we can truly say that when we consider our brothers and sisters, whether, wherever they're at, that we do love them. And we can say that without hesitation, and it's so true. It's just beauty. It's the beauty of holiness. And only God is holy, so we, could, we have to do that by the grace of the Almighty God to be able to do that and say that with truth, that they're not here with us physically, but obviously they are here with us. Okay, so praise the Lord God for that. And then also in that same chapter, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. And I love this part. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. Listen to this. Who can say it better than that? No, exactly. No one says it better than the Lord our God. I'm going to start again, and I'm going to read that again and just cover the entire verse this time. So forgive me if I do stop and hesitate. I really do want to stay on track by the grace of God. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. In other words, we don't need to know everything. We just don't 
There's no way we could, nor do I want to. I trust the one who does know all things, and so do you. And that's how we do trust him. We, he knows our, our getting up and our laying down. He knows everything about us. He knows the words before we speak them. Amen. He knows the hairs on our head, and on and on I could go. But see, that's our, our magnificent God that we serve. Amen. He is the only true and mighty God, and there is no other. That's fantastic because how many people actually know that? With assurance. They're able to establish their whole trust on that. I don't believe everybody in this world does know that. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. And to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Amen. Amen. The beauty of the word of God is just unsurpassed. Amen. You do not get any better than that. It's the best news ever. It always will be. Again, how, do else, how else do we live? How else do we do what we do without the word of God? No way. So let's carry on and continue and go to Romans 10. I'm glad that one day we're not going to be bound by time. In the meantime, we are going to study that which is eternal. We are going to look forward to that and see, look at the hope of, of, of glory that's in us. You know, it sounds like such a casual conversation, but it really isn't. Not really. It's really the truth. And that truth not only sets us free, but makes us free. In Romans 10, we are going to go to verse 4 and start there. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. What a key statement that is. I know you all believe. And that's really, really awesome because that's how we do come in unity. We all believe. We all have a goal set in mind to come here today. We have come here today to glorify God, to worship him in spirit and in truth, to be in one accord. Those are, I, I can say that with assurance. I can say that with just definition. We've all come here to do this. All of us have. We have come here to strengthen one another. None of us need to know everything about everybody. Because all we're doing is praying for one another. We love one another with an unfeigned love. It's not fake. It's not, you know, like, oh, I love you. Okay, give me something. It's nothing about that. It has, it has absolutely nothing about that. And how did we learn that? How did we learn to be that way? Because we trust the Lord. He has given us time to learn about him and to continue to learn about him because what is the next battle going to bring? Are our garments going to be rolled in blood? Is it going to be the din and noise of a great battle? Of course, we better expect a battle. But isn't the battle the Lord's? Amen. Doesn't he give us the opportunity to put on the garments of praise? Amen. Right in the middle of the battle and right in the middle of the enemy, as the word of God says, he sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. The table of the Lord. What do we eat from that gives us life? It's the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, it stirs us all. It should stir you. Look at the examples we have to follow from the word of God. It's in our heart and in our mouth that we are able to, if we can't think of what to say to somebody, he's there. I've got proof. I just read it this morning. It's in the word of God. Praise the Lord God. Okay, Romans 10, that's where I was reading. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. Right here, 
in this building, we're going to hear the word of faith preached. And we have come here today because that's one of the biggest reasons. We're going to hear the preaching of God's word. It's going to lift you up. It's going to, it's going to, through the course of this day, and it stays with you. It doesn't just leave you as you walk out and say, what did he just say? That's not the case. We're going to be awake. We're going to be alive. We're going to be stronger because of it, because who are we going to have to help the next day? Who are we going to have to face, and what is going to be before us? Well, with God before us, who can stand against us? Incredible. The word of God is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth. If nothing else today out of all of this, I know you're going to remember that. Because it's the word of God and it's true. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? From everything that is not of God. Everything that is unrighteous and unholy. Everything that is corrupt. Look at the chances we have. Look at the opportunity we have right now in this moment, because that's all we can do anything about is this moment. For with thy heart and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. No one else can offer that. Only the Lord God Almighty, and he gave us this word to know that. He gave us his word to understand that. He gave us this word to live by and to have salvation and righteousness. And to continue on that same one, um, let's just go to 2 Corinthians 3. I'm condensing what I have, I promise. Thank the Lord God for his word. Oh, it's just, it's just so wondrous. It's hard for me. To, I can't wrap my mind around it, but my mind is renewed in Christ Jesus, so I can. Okay, there you, that's the answer. <laughs> for as much as ye, oh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 3, if I did not say that, forgive me. For as much as ye are manifestly declared, I did say 2 Corinthians, yes. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Let's get that in our minds. Listen to that. Again, the beauty of the word of God, you just cannot compare it to anything else. You can't. It doesn't even, nothing comes close. Not in the tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. Again, I'm just verifying what it says at the title, In Thy Mouth and In Thy Heart. There it is. The Word of God is written in your heart. Who wrote it there? Well, it's the Spirit of the living God. That's amazing to me. That's just, it's just amazing beyond compare. And one more time, let's go to Ezekiel 11. And then just verify that one more time by the grace of the Almighty God. In Ezekiel 11, we're going to go to verse 19. And it's just, again, it's just to look at that and see the printed page. That your eyes are open, your heart is open, your mind is open. And the beauty of it is just overwhelming. No wonder some songs say it's like a flood flooding over you. It's like a rain falling upon you. It's like a wind blowing over you. Lord God, I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. Who wants to keep the old fleshly man spirit, the, the nature of man, everything that just everything wrong about it except? And I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. A, f a heart that is acceptable to God, that can accept his spirit. Instead of those hard, stubborn, rebellious, ornery, 
spirits and the hearts of man that just do everything they can to resist God and everything good. He has worked with us and has given us a time that we are able to have that renewed, to be able to be redeemed and be restored and to have a heart that he can work with and to be able for us to realize that we can open our heart to him. Then we in turn will benefit with eternity. You can't get any better than that because we do want to live. We do. And we want to do more than just live. We want to be alive. And we are. We are alive in him. And he's alive in us. There's the word of God that's in your heart and in your mouth. His life made manifest in you. Let's one more time, let's go to Psalm 51.10. I'm expounding on the heart part, and then we'll get to the mouth part. Because God is good, and he allows us to do all of this. He allows us to seek and to find more about him, and, and to just, it just really does everything for us. In Psalms 51.10, I believe a lot of us are familiar with this. In fact, I know Bill is. This was one of our memory verses of our, of our days of youth. I do remember this. But listen to this. I mean, we are older. We have gained understanding by, by God's grace and his mercy. He has allowed that, and he wants us to seek and find and gain understanding. I understand a lot more about this verse than I did when I was young. I promise. And yet I want to understand it even more. I do. Create in me a clean heart. And, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes, Everybody here knows you're going to get fought. Everybody here. Everybody here knows that the deceiver is trying to deceive just as quickly as you can learn and understand about the Lord God. He's there. He's wanting to fight us. He wanted to deceive us. He wants to just guide us off just a little bit here, a little bit there. Smoke and mirrors. Any trick that he can use, he's going to use. But what do we have? We have the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Look at the way God has prepared us. And he trusts that we're going to do this. He does. He trusts and knows that by faith, we're going to do this. Because if we don't, we're going to suffer the consequences of that. If we let down our guard, there's going to be consequences for it. We're going to be stuck with some fiery darts. But even if we are fought, even if there are trials that just seem like sometimes they're endless, and sometimes for some folks it may seem that way, this too shall pass. And it's going to. Everything will be made new. These are God's, these are God's promises. They're exceedingly great and precious, and they're not going to fail. Every one of his T's are crossed and every one of his I's are dotted with his precious blood. And it's not going to fail. And this is what we have. This is what every one of us have. That it is in your heart and it is in your mouth. Let's go to Exodus 4. I just love this. I, I, D is sitting there drinking coffee with me at the table in the morning and I'm working on I'm, finishing this up and detailing and going over and enjoying. And I get to, I get to ask D questions, and you, she can verify that. But we, and we, what's even better is this. We all have understanding. We may have some, maybe some different viewpoints, but it's the same thing. It's the same understanding, you know, what I may not be able to see. You know, like, I can see the forest, but not the trees. In the same respect, she may see the trees and not the forest. You know what I'm getting at. God put that there for a reason as well, so that we could understand better. So that maybe what I didn't understand, maybe to the detail that I wanted to know, because I do want to know God more. I do. That's been my prayer for many years. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you better all the time. You know me really well. You know everything about Kevin. You know, everything about every one of my brothers and sisters worldwide. I want to know more about you, Lord. I do. I want to know more about you. Whether it's through the preaching, whether it's through the reading and the study, whether it's through the beautiful songs that I hear sing and able to sing. There's so many different levels that he will take care of us. 
And he's able to present that. And getting back to my, my, toler my tolerant wife, but really, I mean, she has understanding too, and that's what I trust. And that's why I get to ask her questions while she's in the middle of drinking her coffee. But in turn, she gets to share her understanding with me. And you know what that does for you. When you talk to another person of the same faith that you have and the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're able to talk back and forth, look at how much stronger you become. Look at how you can help one another. Look at the strength you're going to need for the next day. Because you're going to need it. Because again, we're all reminded, the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. Okay, Exodus 4, verses 10 through 15. I have five minutes. Okay. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. <laughs> and the Lord said unto him, now, how would you like to be in that position where you, are, where you get to talk to the Lord and he's talking back to you? Amen. Wow. I believe that I would be on the ground face down. It would be really hard to talk to him by then. But in the same respect, you know what I'm saying. He does talk to us. He does all the time. Okay. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Isn't that true with us as well? Oh, I could have said it better. Why did I say that? Why did I say it in that tone? You know what I'm saying. I do, and you do. But God will always bring good out of anything, anything. Only he does that. So that we, just have to, we just have to trust him and press on because you can't take back what you said. It's, you can't unsay it. God doesn't have to worry about that. But we trust him that anything we have done or said or anything like that, he's able to bring good out of it. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. <laughs> oh Lord. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. I really, I'm really thankful for Brother Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also behold... He cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. <laughs> it really sounds like, you know, that God just, God takes care of everything when we're not sure what's going to happen next. We're just not sure. And we really aren't. And I don't know if we want to be. We don't want to know what tomorrow brings. For some people, they may curl up in corners and say, I really don't want to deal with that. That may be the case. So we trust the Lord. We do. We just, we have to really trust him because Brother Moses is learning this. We all learn this. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. That's what's amazing to me. The Lord is revealing these things to Moses and then he has to share them with Aaron. And then Aaron is the mouthpiece. That's incredible. That is really incredible how God works. In the mouth of two or three, let everything be established. That's what came to me when I'm reading this. It's like, this is amazing, Lord. It is truly amazing now how here we are today, and now there's quite a few mouths here. It's not just two or three, there's quite a few. Amen. But his word's going to be established. Because of your wonderful witness, Sister Meg, or Sister Margo, or Brother Daniel, his word is going to be established because we all have really the same goal. It's our testimony, it's our witness of him to those, not only to ourself, but to others. To the ones we're here, right, right, here with right now. It's the kind, gentle word that we spoke. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. It's good to see you. I love you. All of those things, those can go a long way and make the whole tone of your day far different than what it started out to be. Amen. 
So this tone of what the Lord God put right here on this page for all of us, don't worry about it. I'll help you. My word is in your mouth. Amen. Can it get any better than that? No. Thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. That's what he's doing right now here today, brothers and sisters. He is here with us, teaching us what to do, what to say, how to say it, so that I'm not overtoning anybody and sounding harsh or anything like this. I want to be, I want to glorify God and worship him the same that you do. I love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, and mind, as you do. And he knows that. I want to proclaim it, as you all do, with your witness, with your testimony, with your mouth. And we all should be doing that. We all know better by now. None of us are children of understanding. We're all adult understanding in the spirit. It's 10 o'clock. It's time for me to pray and to let the rest of this wonderful, beautiful service of God continue on. Gracious Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that I have done what is acceptable to you, Lord God, what is pleasing to you, Father God. It is your word, Father God, and I am definitely pleased to know you, Lord God, and the power of your might. Today, Lord God, you have touched every person, Lord God, every man, woman, and child, Lord God, that is here. Father God, that just by the faith of their coming, Lord God, and I pray that they are blessed far more than they ever expected, Lord God, and that's just the way you work. Father God, today for those, Lord God, who are having a tough battle, Lord God, I know you're there. You are never afar off. Your presence is always there, Father God. So in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, let those who seek you find you. In the holy and righteous name of Jesus Christ, amen. Join in the, together in the house of worship and praise his holy name. Thank the Lord as the refrains of the music. They just lend such beauty to the faith that's contained therein. 
Well, thank the Lord and God bless all those who are gathered here in the name of Jesus this day. Just as a reminder along uh, the way, it's nice we have a bright, sunshiny day out there, but the winter season does approach. December's just right around the corner. So remember, with cancellations, you know, uh, we'll try to get the word out as quick as we can, you know, because of, of, of the early starting time, you know, we'll have to make our decisions, you know, pretty quickly on, on those things when weather conditions come about, and they will come about. Uh, so we'll try to get that up, on, and Rachel will post it on the Facebook page and, and all the other ways we communicate together. So just be aware of things, and as ever, your best defense is always your good judgment. You know, make sure uh, about things, because conditions out here on the gravel roads and out in the country are, are, can be significantly different than they are in town. So just keep, and you know these things, but it's just a reminder, so just be aware of all these things. Uh, in, in other matters of the church, I want to thank God always for uh, the support of the people here, the congregation, which you are. Uh, no church survives without the support of its own people, and, and thank the Lord we've gotten to this point, and we pray to carry on until the Lord comes. Amen. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we have been able to, in recent days, make significant contributions to our brethren overseas in, on the African continent, in Uganda, and Zambia. And I'm going to be a little sparse on the details here. We're not here just to pat ourselves on the back or, or anything like that. You know, in, in conversations, you know, I'll speak to the specifics about it. But uh, some of the, what we have done has been uh, uh, parceled out to uh, pastors in Uganda, help support some of the radio programming and so forth, and just the people themselves, and uh, also to keep things going uh, on the, the internet and so forth, so we've been instrumental in doing that, which we are glad to do. You know, that's, it, it's great to be able to help people who are our brethren and uh, these companions of faith that they are, you know, these are our like-minded people of faith that we Amen. worship with, so... Uh, we're just glad to do that, so I, I appreciate all those things, and because of your contributions, support of the church, Hallelujah. we're able to do that, and we'll Thank continue you. to do so in, in Jesus' name. Amen. In matters of prayer, I remember, uh, remember Sister Judy, she's here today, but uh, God bless her, she does have a corrective action upcoming uh, that uh, will be the first week of December, I believe, so we're just praying along with Sister Amen. Judy for for those things, uh, praying along with Sister Joyce. Uh, also, she has a prayer request for Amanda Joy, her granddaughter. And it's a fairly serious matter to determine uh, health concern. So we just uh, pray that uh, the test will come out to the good and, uh, and show things in a, in a manner that's glorifying to the Almighty and, and just go from there. So for, in Joyce's family, for Amanda. And also a few, you know, have sniffles and, and some symptoms of, of illness. Sister Florence among them, she's staying home today. Sister Abigail also. So we'll just remember them in prayer and thank the Lord for lifting them up and being our healer, being our yeah. strength, being our great provider. He's always upholding us yeah. by, his, by the word of his witness. So uh, we thank the Lord for those things today. And also, Brother Ray Whittakin gave me a prayer request for a friend and neighbor in, uh, in Amboy there by the name of Neil Pitzer, who has a serious condition and an upcoming procedure on Tuesday. So we pray for the Lord to yeah. strengthen that person and just strengthen the faith within and work a mighty work. So we're just going to agree with Brother Ray concerning his friend, Neil. Amen. So, we have much to pray about. We have much to thank the Lord for. We thank the Lord for his eternal presence this day. Yes. Amen. So, we just thank the Lord for all that he is to us. Amen. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Sharon was not able to come today. She's having an issue that okay. seems to be a kidney stone. Okay, for Sherry. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's remember to pray for Sister Sherry. She always likes to be here when she can. And has been able to be here a little bit of late, of course, you know, according to the condition. 
uh, but we're just praying for Sister Sherry and a possible complication, uh, lower midsection. So we'll just pray for the Lord to be, be the strength there. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right. Well, uh, Brother Ray, do you want to add something? Okay, for Ray's dad. Yeah, yeah, Pray, praying along for all those things. And, and remember also Sister Patty, Sister Patty Massey, amongst those that not feeling her uh, best today. So we just pray for the Lord to lift her up in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We need his blessings. We always have need of him. When we rely upon the Lord and we lean upon the everlasting arms, we become more his children, right? He becomes more a father to us as we learn to uh, rely upon the Holy One of Israel. So yes, many prayer requests we have. We'll have more. Thank God he's able to deliver and even above all that we ask and think. So we yes, just thank the Lord. I'm going to call Brother Joe forward if he would pray this morning for these prayer requests. Thank you, and just thank the Lord for the service today. Amen, Brother Joe. Thank you, Jesus. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we're gathered here to worship you. Lord, all the prayer requests that were made, Lord, you know each and every uh, of the geese and the birds that are in Canada and all around the world, Lord, how much more do you care for us? Yeah. Lord, for the strength, Lord, for the healing, all healings of you, whether the doctors assist, the medical community assist, all healing is of you. So, Lord, I thank you for the sunshine that we have today. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of the rain and the sunshine. Yes, Lord. Lord, the blessings of health and of a long life. Lord, the blessings that we pray for our nation, for our children, for our families. Lord, for those about us. I'm mindful, Lord, of Kevin's prayer where he was reading Moses' prayer saying, we're praying and blessing those that are here in our midst today and those that are also not here today. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, in all ages, you're the same, the almighty, the invincible, the perfect God. Hallelujah. So we thank you for your divine presence in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Amen, amen. amen. amen Lord. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving's not over. Let's sing Grace, Grace, and God's Grace. Yeah, amen. It's sufficient. <laughs>
Thank the Lord for that which is sufficient for us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's get to where the healing waters flow, shall Thank we? You, Lord. Faith is leading me. Amen. Thank the Lord. going to sing it out. God is good. <laughs> yes, he is. Amen.
like the way that hits on the tambourine right there at the end. Well, thank the Lord that he is good Amen. all the time. Amen. You may be seated at this time as Brother Bill Lord. comes forward. Let there be praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Bill. God bless Brother Ryan. God bless everyone this morning. And if you don't like noise, don't go to heaven. You'll be noisy up there. Amen. 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 Glory. For our first selection, we will sing, I bowed on my knees. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I dreamed I went to that city called Glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered great I cried holy the angels all met me there they carried me from mansion to mansion and all the sights I saw but I said I want to see Jesus the one who died for all then I bowed on my knees and cried holy clap my hands and sing glory, glory, glory to the Son of God. I thought when I entered that city, my loved ones all knew me well. They showed me all through heaven, the scenes are too numerous to tell. They showed me Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Mark, Luke, and Timothy. But I said I want to bow down and give praise to the one who died for me. Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy. the Son of God. I thought when I saw my Savior, oh glory to God, I just fell right down before him, singing praise the name of the Lord. I bow down and worship Jehovah, my friend, my for I wanted to give praise to Jesus For saving a sinner like me Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy Holy, 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 holy. I clapped my hands and sang glory Glory to the Son of God you brothers and sister Miriam for our next selection sister Margo will sing it is I oh, Lord Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah if you can Put on thy strength, O Zion. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down with me. Put 
put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Ye are redeemed without money. Every day my name is blasphemed, but my people shall know my name. They shall know I am he that speaks. Behold, it is I. Depart ye, depart ye, go out from thence, go out from the midst of her, be clean ye vessels of the Lord. I have chosen thee for an house of sacrifice, mine house is an house of prayer. I have chosen and sanctified thee. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord thy God. My people are never ashamed. Behold, it is I. Happy are my people that are in such a case. Yea, happy are my people whose God is the Lord. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down with me. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. I have redeemed thee with my blood. Arise and shine, for thy glory is come. My glory is risen upon thee, and my glory shall be seen upon thee. Behold, it is I. Amen. Thank the Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name. Amen. God bless you, Sister Margo. Our next selection, Sister Patty, will sing Psalms 23. I know we all think it's really awesome that we have really nothing to fear because the Lord is always with us and um, helps us in our time of need. Amen. The Lord is, is my shepherd. I shall not want He makes me lie In green pastures He leads me by the stream Restores my soul Restores my soul. He guides me down the paths of righteousness, and it is all for his name's sake. And yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear, fear no evil, for thou 
art with me and thy rock and thy rod and staff will surely comfort me he prepares for me the table before me in the presence of my enemies he anointeth my head with oil and my cup it overflows now surely goodness and mercy will follow all the days of my life and i will dwell dwell in the house of my lord forevermore i will fear fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and thy rod and staff will surely comfort me now surely goodness and mercy will follow all the days of my life and i shall dwell dwell in the house of my lord forevermore i will fear fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and thy rod and staff will surely comfort me when he comes for me when he comes for me amen god bless you sister patty for our last selection we will sing how great is our god and great is the lord
Calvary, we're going to sing the whole song, and then we'll sing, I love him because he first loved me. We'll sing that chorus following the song, but before we start that, I'd like to read a scripture, something God didn't have to do, but he did because he was committed to eternal life. He was committed to salvation for us and committed to completing his word and fulfilling it, so... Uh, the scripture I, re I read this week and it just really stayed with me and moved me to read today would be St. Matthew 27, verses uh, 26 through 31. And, and it reads like this. Then released he, which is Pilate, Barnabas, unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered him unto the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. That scripture really stayed with me today. It just, Kevin read a scripture this morning about how God was talking to Moses about because Moses said he couldn't speak, couldn't speak plainly. And God already knew that Aaron couldn't speak, or Aaron could speak. And God knew that. And it's just amazing how small we are. Pastor Ryan's been going over the book of Job with us on Wednesdays in our Bible study. And the four chapters that Job went through, the chastisement, and just the opening up of Job's eyes that, hey, look who I am. Without me, you are nothing. You're so small. And then God took time to come down to earth and he took this took this curse upon him for us. Yeah, Lord God. It just Thank you. it just really moved me that God Thank did that for us. And we're so small without him we could do nothing. That's right. So thank you, Lord. I just thank the Lord for his word that he gave us to share with us, to read it and embrace it. Thank so we'll sing the whole complete song. It's on page one ninety in the green book. We'll sing at Calvary, the whole song, and after we sing the chorus of the last verse, we'll sing, I love him, I love him, because he first loved me.
Thank you, Jesus. Praises be unto Thank your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your precious Hallelujah. word. Let's bow our heads and praise him, shall we, in prayer. Sister Miriam, place through, Father. Truly, we love our Father above. We love your name. We love to praise you, Father. So let's just arise and shine in Jesus' name. As we take in the light of your gospel into our spirits, Lord, let it be a glory to us. Let us put on the whole armor of God whereby we are able to withstand all the wiles of the enemy in this great and dreadful day. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're our deliverance, our Savior, and our healer. Father, for you have brought grace unto us, Lord. We live within that. Father, just let it move and have its place among our being. Let your spirit be among us this day and dwell therein, all according to the name and faith of Jesus Christ, in whom we believe, in whom we trust, in whom we hold to now and forevermore. Thank you, dear Lord, for being amongst us this day. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Thank Amen. you, dear Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, make their way out. Thank the Lord that he's among us this day. What a blessedness, what a joy divine to know that we lean on something that's not temporal but has everlasting properties. Amen. Thank the Lord, for truly he has purchased our salvation on Calvary's tree. So we thank the Lord continually. As in uh, the praises of God, there's such, there's such victory in the music. There's such healing properties within the praises of God's people. That truly is our victory, and, and uh, as Brother Bill said there, if you don't like the noise of praise, amen, don't go to heaven. There's going to be a lot of it there, so thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So may they be highly blessed who love the Lord and extol his name beyond all things, either above or below, is truly the name of Jesus is worthy to be praised in the sense of worship, and of course to give the credit thereof accordingly also. As God speaks to us by the way of the prophets and apostles, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the all-encompassing presence of the Lord that's always there, wherever it is that we may go, it's there, and whenever it is that we draw breath, in order to praise and to hallow his name, he is there, even if we walk through the valley of the shadow. Lord, you're with me. I'm still walking in Jesus' name because life is going to take hold of me. So thank the Lord. So thank the Lord for the praise. You know, I'm digging being among you all today. Amen. Thank the Lord. I'm, get, I'm getting into this worship thing in Jesus' name. For it, it just glorifies, it makes God's name so very holy. Amen. Yeah keeps us all on the same page spiritually, and we're stronger when we're together, when we assemble Amen. together and praise his name. So for we who are gathered, now is the day. Now is the day to do that. Now is the day of our salvation and our testimony, and this is the only time that we do have on this side of the curtain of time to be witnesses of the faith that was once delivered to the saints here in the days of our earthly pilgrimage. I'm glad to be able to do it now, as uh, Brother Jack did for so many years, amen, from uh, this pulpit and doing so. And all those, you know, uh, I won't mention every name that we've worshipped with today, but uh, thank the Lord for all of them. They've all added strength to us. They've all been our comrades in arms in praise. And thank the Lord for those that have gone on, have rest and joy and peace in Jesus' name, they, their lives still have a part here today. They're all part of what we're doing today. Amen. So those of us that are here and who remain, we're going to be faithful in the witness that was delivered here in the days of our earthly pilgrimage, even as those who came before us were. And it's all to the glory of the Lord when we do so. Uh, that glory, it's reserved, of course, to God the Father. Uh, who dwells above, 
But thank the Lord, he readily shares that glory with us. So we praise his name. And we're going to praise his name today by speaking to this title, which is Speak to the Rock. Speak to the Rock. There's so much of our testimony and song and, and the, the scriptures read and so forth that uh, just go hand in hand with the subject today. It always goes together in Jesus' name. I never worry about that. We thank the Lord. We always know that praise will uh, come together line upon line, even as the scriptures do, precept upon precept. It all forms together to form the great witness. So our subject matter today is speak to the rock. And this is a bit of a reworking and expansion of a midweek service I delivered back in October. It was the 7th of October, if you want to go back and look at that. Uh, but this is the pulpit version of some of those things that were uh, spoken then. As Jehovah God, El Shaddai, delivered to Moses upon the mount, I am a jealous God, and I'll have no other gods before me. That's the, uh, that's the witness proclaimed to us, and so it is. But that does not mean that God is some type of uh, self-centered, self-serving God, but rather it's a case of this, that truth cannot stand to be in the presence of lies. Any more than darkness can cover light, light has to shine. It says to the darkness, you don't even know what I'm doing. You can't comprehend me. You can't overcome me. It shines. Truth has to do that very thing. And it has to show itself amidst all the darkness of this world. And the word must rise above all else that all, only brings death and ruin in the end. You know, we put the religions and the philosophies and the mythologies of this world, you know, we put it into books and we may admire it culturally, I'm not speaking for myself, but just in a, a worldwide sense and so forth. But in the end, all those things speak against the truth of what God stands for. It's not the way, and this is the way that was given to us of God, and it gives life. And all those other things have to be swept aside. And God instituted worship, not that he needs constant self-gratification, but in order that we may live out the precepts of the gospel by the seek and ye shall find principle. So that's what we're doing today. Thank the Lord. What I don't know, I will know when I need to know it according to God's purpose. If I seek the promises that I will find. And so praise does that. The music of the praise, if it dwells within, and the knowledge that's contained within the song, it goes hand in hand with faith, and faith builds itself up by that knowledge, and, and the, the beauty of the music just lends itself to that effect. Well, thank the Lord. How would we ever communicate with God's Spirit without praise of worship? It's our line to glory. It's what God has given us in order to be known as well as to know our God. So amen. It's our avenue of mercy that God extends to us so that we may happily find him. It gets our focus upward. It brings the mercy of God's restoration spirit right into our lives. So uh, to do just that and to bring his spirit into the house, we speak the word of faith, which is preached. We speak to the rock by way of the title uh, for this morning and in, uh, into the afternoon time. Speak to the rock. We speak to the rock of ages that was cleft for me, as it was for Moses back in the days of the Exodus, when the glory of the Lord passed by and Moses was covered there in that uh, fissure, in that cleft, <clears throat> excuse me, of the rock. And this speaking of faith, it's so very precious. It's what saved you. It saved you and I. The speaking of the heart by showing itself in the outward confession the expression of faith said, in the beginning, let there be light. And then there was. Uh, the word of God speaks to us by way of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Let there be faith within, let it speak accordingly, and you will be saved. Amen. And thank the Lord he's given us that way to find him in order to sustain and nurture life, just as it was in the beginning. And that confession of faith, that is a, a work of faith. You know, in, in the, the scriptures that talk about how uh, faith without works is dead, being alone, 
That's where you start your works, by an outward confession, by belief in the heart, which is a work of Almighty God, and confessing it outwardly, and thus do the works of God. Start. And you go on from there, and you grow in the knowledge of the faith of the Lord. And you act accordingly, and you bear one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. And spoken belief was how Jesus manifested himself to the people in the, in the roads of Judea and Samaria and upon the hilltops and from the bar, borrowed boat upon the sea coast there. By words, God gave the faith of the very master himself, the faith of Jesus. By words, he gave them to it. And you just have to have those. You have to have it. You have to have the words of Jesus. Not only are words important, but creative works and miracles are held within those words. And it's all salvation to us. It's all the light of the gospel. As language itself, that was part of the gift given to mankind in order to develop the seed that God had planted within the human spirit. And examining these spiritual facts, that gets our focus set upon the eternal God, here in the place of his preparing. And then the heaven, uh, which is to come, the place of God's abiding, well, that's laid out before us. And those things are promised. <clears throat> and they are yea and amen. So the words of faith and the expounding thereof, there, there are no heights that can't be reached in Christ Jesus. This is a word of no limitations. Remember, that was the Exodus generation fault. They limited God. They saw the works that he did. They saw the, the, the ten plagues, the effects of them. They saw the miracles at the Red Sea. But they constantly limit the Almighty God in thinking what he could or could not do or would or would not do. We have a gospel that has no limits. And, now, and we have to learn that within the limitations that we do have in our own being in this life. We can only run so fast. We can only jump so high. We can only uh, take so much in, in any certain place. But thank the Lord, God lifts us up. But uh, all those things that we make our way to, we're making our way toward that which has no limits, and that's within God's word. Because all these things that will give way to that which is ordained to, to be in Jesus' name. So put simply, impossibilities do not exist. They don't. This is the gospel of no impossibilities. And this is our place right now, within the limitations of life that God has set within, but he's teaching us of a glory which is to come when all else gives way. And this is where you develop your spirit. This is where you learn to appreciate all that is eternal. It's our place to comprehend what is never ending in order to get our start. And after that, then it's heaven. Why couldn't God just create some place that's perfect where there's no death and there's no tears anymore? He did do that. He did do that. That's, that was the point of all this. But you're going to appreciate it all the more because of what you went through in the here and now. So thank the Lord. And God knows how to build the house of faith. He knows how to build your spirit. He knows how to lift you up. He knows how to put your feet on the rock to stay. He knows how to uh, get you out of the miry clay. Amen. In Jesus' name. It's just for a moment. And thank the Lord. And there's victory in all these things. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to read from the first verse and on down through verse 4. Let's speak, let's speak to the rock, let's speak to the rock of ages in order to fulfill Jeremiah and the call laid out in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 and the, and the call unto me and I will answer thee principle that the creator desires of us. Let's do that. We're going to call unto him. We're going to see what he desires for us. <clears throat> out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I've referenced this uh, uh, of late as to the baptism aspect that's contained within because uh, when the children of Israel went through the sea and under the cloud, it was a baptism, so to speak, uh, uh, of judgment and of the miracles of God. And it, it was a, a fomenting of the baptism principle that John the Baptist would come uh, forward and preach in the New Testament era at the dawn of the uh, the message that came through the Jesus Messiah. 
So it's a, a type of that. So, so to speak, there's a baptism going on in these scriptures. But let's put our attention to the rock portion of it for our title today. And uh, just think on these things as we read out of 1 Corinthians 10th chapter, first verse, which says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Now, let's just stop right there. If that, was a, if that was one separate verse and there was a period after the word ignorant, that would be worthy of note right there. Our fight is a fight against ignorance uh, because uh, people don't know things. What, what did Jesus say? He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Uh, that, that's a fight against the ignorance of unbelief that doesn't take in the whole scope of what God is. And uh, as Christians, because of the way the Bible is misinterpreted largely and, and you know, because of uh, other philosophies and atheistic ideas and so forth, uh, people come to conclusions because they're ignorant of what's contained within the word of Almighty God and the beauty and the scope of it, how God thinks on higher levels because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than ours. We can learn them through, <clears throat> through scripture <clears throat> and that's marvelous to us. But we need that. We need the learning by Scripture. So I would not have you be ignorant. Learn what you can. See the depth of the Word of God and all the beauty that's contained within it and what it does for us. So I would not that you should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. Now that's the direct presence of the Almighty God. Remember, he led them by a pillar of fire in the cloud of his presence. And all passed through the sea and were all baptized, so to speak, in a, in a manner of speaking. Were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now take a special note of that, that they drank from that rock because that will have application as we go on here in our service. As we'll tie this to the instance of Moses and drawing water out of the rock. There are a couple instances we'll read of before services end in that respect, but take a special note of that because it, it's foundation for what is to come. All right, so. In order for God to be well pleased, you got to speak to him by faith. You got to have an outward confession, which indicates a, a, an interior condition, internal condition. So, which uh, the ones who are overthrown, as, as you go on to read in, in, in verse 5 of the same chapter here in 1 Corinthians 10, and in the Exodus count, they were overthrown. Because as they were making their, self, uh, making their way through the literal wilderness of sin, sin with a capital S, it was a place name, still survives today in the Sinai Peninsula, the wilderness of sin. Uh, we're making our way through a wilderness of sin in the figurative sense in, in this world, the world of flesh and the devil that we have to get through in Jesus' name. So the ones that were Following Moses, not all of them entered into the promised land. Now, in most cases, of course, a rock is not associated with the drinking thereof. But this one is. This one is. Who did Christ come to be? He came to be living water. Rock of ages, there you go. They're drinking from the same spiritual rock that is Christ Jesus. This one, this rock of Christ the Lord, from whom all blessings flow, is that same spiritual drink that we read of. It's the same solid foundation. It's the same rock of our salvation. And this is not accidental imagery. It's not coincidence. It has foundation in Scripture, as Paul, the, the writer thereof, by the inspiration imparted to him. He came to these conclusions, and Paul knew these things very well. So there, it's more than just... Uh, there's a beauty to it, to the tempo and the flow of the, of the words, but it's more than just a flowery metaphor. There's actuality to it. And we'll apply that here as we, as we go along. And it's a solid rock. 
It's the rock upon which we stand, as they partook of the rock who begat them, and that rock was always Christ, because that was the point of everything. That was the point of all scriptures. It was a point to get you to there, to that place of at Calvary, where you first saw the light. Amen. It was all to get you there. And centuries before the birth in Bethlehem, that was true. It was to get you to that point. And if it's in God's thoughts, which the idea of coming forth and being a savior, and even as the father above desired to be a, a son in order to take upon the likeness of sinful flesh and be as we are and partake among us, that was in God's thought process. You know, a young person when they're born, you know, that's one of the first things they do, you know, in the lower grades, you know, in kindergarten, first grade, you know, do a little essay on who you want to be when you grow up. Who'd God want to be? He wanted to be this. He wanted to have a name. He wanted to be a savior. He wanted to walk amongst us and bring deliverance. And he was able to make it happen. Some of us, you know, from a youth, you can, whatever occupation you desired, you can make it bring forth uh, in your life it's at some point in your life. God had that type of desire. He wanted to bring forth. He foresaw what he wanted to be, and he made it happen. He made it happen. So he, is a, he brought forth life and brought us all forth accordingly. So in all these things, the outlines are here. This is a prophetic gospel, without question. It's not limited. There's no impossibilities. Impossibilities do not exist. And we need to be aware and awake and alive and cognizant of that fact. It has to be there because I would not that you would be ignorant. Yeah. There are no impossibilities Amen. in Christ Jesus. What men think is impossible, nothing's impossible with the Lord. So we have the, the word of truth that exists through prophetic uh, uh, scriptures, eternal truths. They exist from ever. They have no beginning or ending, even as God has no beginning or ending, because God is an eternal truth that always was. And you can't get back to a time when that wisdom was not. It was God's companion before the earth was formed, before the high mountains, before the low valleys. The thoughts of the eternal one were there. And that is the spiritual rock that we drink from. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, God is the rock of truth. Some truths, they are indeed never-ending. They're eternal, even as God is the great I am, always existent. And when you worship God, you are worshiping truth itself. But not just as a concept or just some arbitrary uh, idea. This is the thought that had realness to it. This was the thought process that could create and bring forth. And that's who God is. And how great is that? How great is our God that he is an eternal truth? And the truth came to us in a person. The infinite God took on the form of an infant born in Bethlehem, and thus we worship him. Came to uh, adulthood, being raised in and about the northern regions of the Galilee after the coming out of Egypt to escape the persecution under Herod. And all, all the things that are outlined through the gospel in order to be amongst, amongst us for the truth and the sake of the truth itself, because truth has to proclaim itself. Yeah. It has to make itself known. God is that truth which had to make itself known. It had to bring forth life because that was within the very nature of the Almighty Creator. Amen. God was uh, born uh, there in Bethlehem. Jesus came forth. That's holiness in pure form. Yeah. That's living, expressive truth born amongst us. How great is our God? Well, what can we do except praise him? Let's praise him by reading Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to access the very words of the master. Matthew 7 at the 24th verse, which reads, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. We're here to do that today, to put our house on solid foundation, the rock of Christ Jesus, of the rock that has no impossibilities to us, but is limitless, and it's, it's the holiness of truth that ever was, comes forth through these words. Verse 25. I'll liken him to those things in verse 24. And the rain descended in verse 25. And the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Such authority there, as the scriptures go on to say, because Jesus taught with authority, not just dry repetition as the scribes did just by uh, recounting the words, but there was a life within the voice of the master that spoke these things by authority. And what will stand? What else will stand? When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. Where else can we stand? Only on that place of the rock that Christ is. That's our standing place. You have to speak truly about these things. You have to speak out of abundance of the heart. For uh, verses 21, 22 of this same chapter, they contain the sayings of those who have built upon their own works, and then they've attached the name of Jesus to it. There will be those who say, Lord, haven't we done this in all your name? We built this. We we did so and so, he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. Even to this point in some cases, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Yeah. You don't have any part in these things. Because in their heart, they really fought against something that God desired for them. They fought against submitting to his will, like the Pharisee and the Sadducee did in the days of Jesus. Even though they had the flowing robes and they had all the, uh, the visible appearances of holiness, their heart was far removed from the Almighty God. Is that true within our world today? You better believe it is. Uh, the thing that's been is the thing that shall be, and it, it certainly is that way. So holiness is not contained in the mere keeping of rules, nor is it contained even in prophesying or casting out devils, is it? As you can read in those earlier verses I uh, alluded to in, in verse 21 and 22 of this chapter. The Pharisees did all these things, and they're the ones that put them to the cross. So what's visible on the outward, it doesn't necessarily indicate what's going on inside, but God knows. God knows. God gets through. This word, it's a it's a sharp two-edged sword. It'll pierce and divide. It'll get down to the heart and matter of how things stand. And man's worship it can have all the bells and whistles and the smoke and mirrors and it desires, but it still doesn't mean it's in the right spirit. So we have to get down to the real element of what God is. And that, start, that started from the beginning of our story and the story of human creation. Cain worshiped God. He wanted his offering to be accepted. But there was something in his heart that wasn't right. God warned him about it. But he uh, followed through on his own selfish desires, which just stoked up the sin nature within, and he murdered the righteous seed. So we need to consider those things and consider them well. Let's consider Luke chapter 6. We're going to read from verse 45 onward in Luke chapter 6. Thank the Lord for that which prepares the way for us. Yeah. Even as John the Baptist helped prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah, Great. so the words of Jesus prepare us for his return. Now in, in our subject and speak unto the rock, here's an interesting fact. What natural substance did Israel build their cities from? Their houses, their palaces, their uh, whatever it is that you have, there's synagogues, fortresses, all those things. Well, you, you know, you build from whatever material you have, what they have? They had stone. 
they had rock. And of course, they would um, augment the building with uh, trees and, and so forth, the cedars of Lebanon in the case of the temple and so forth. But their primary building material was rock. That's all they had. What do we have to build upon? What do we have? We have the rock that is Christ Jesus. What other rock do we have? That's our, that's our building source. Amen. That's what we have. We don't have anything else except that uh, what God has put in place. Amen. It's all, it's all they had. It's all we have to build upon. Spiritually is the rock of these scriptures, the rock Christ Jesus. And from verse 45, the red letter words of the master ring out in that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. You know that old saying? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I'm going to tell you something. The road to hell is paved with bad intentions. What's bad within is going to come out somewhere. And that's the road to perdition. Amen. But what is good will lead you to the cross. It'll lead you to life. It'll lead you to light forevermore in Jesus' name. All right. The last sentence of the verse. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it. For it was founded upon the rock. Where else do we have to stand? It's all we got. We don't have anything else to build on. Amen. Thank you. This is all we've got. You can't build on anything that's temporary. You can't build on lies. You can't build on man's philosophies and traditions and all these things. This is all we have to build. But here's this. Here's the good news of verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Now there, in effect, you just read the book of Revelation. If you understand my meaning. Verse 49, and all those scriptures accordingly, that's, that's the whole book of Revelation. The storm comes up and the ruin of uh, all that Babylon is, commercially, economically, politically, boom, down it goes. And the only thing that will stand is the word of God. What else will stand in the days of great slaughter when the towers fall? This is the only rock we've got to build upon. Amen. Through the rock of Christ Jesus. So, and if it isn't red letter words, if it isn't red letter, it needs to be better. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank the Lord we have the black letter uh, of the Old Testament, you know, that's founded in the fact of this, that scripture we read in 1 Corinthians 10. It's fine. It was always Christ, so the red letter words always apply, and the black letter words of the Lord su uh, supply uh, the foundation to what Jesus said. And all these things work together. But traditions of man are not a rock. Who is like unto our God? It's not a rock to build on. Denominational structures are not a rock to build on. Are there many still saved within those? Yes, there are. Thankfully, out of the Lord's mercy, because the name of Jesus will have good effect. Even if it's, not, even if it's only under permissive will, the name of Jesus will have effect out of God's mercy, the mercy that we all share together. But there are also within the world of nominal Christianity, traditional denominational Trinitarian Christianity, and even within some branches of oneness Christianity, there resides there a spirit of apathy that wants to retain a little bit of the blessings of the Almighty God, but yet not commit themselves to the Most High, of which the most outstanding example of that is the message to Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3 there. 
And by these examples, we learn of things. We learn not to be ignorant. We have to learn where our foundations are. In like manner, consider Esau of old. Remember, he rejected his blessing and his inheritance. Because why? Just didn't place a high value of it until it got down to a brass tax and he realized he was missing out on something. Uh, but he did not care enough about it in his life to possess it until it was too late. And then his desire was for revenge. Now, thankfully, there was a uh, later on he'd be reconciled with his brother Jacob Israel. But their descendants, as you go on through Scripture, they would be opponents down through the corridors of time. So these things have great effect. The only thing that will stand in the day of the flood is Christ Jesus. That's our rock. Nothing else will stand. And as the Master stated, uh, another place of Scripture, everybody knows how to give good gifts to their children, but uh, this calling goes farther than that alone. We have to be willing to give of the life of Christ and witness to others so that they can be our brother. This gets right down to the content of the soul. It gets right down to the spirit within and to the heart of who you are. So uh, these foundations, they're set in place in order to, that we would consist of all that God is. Every word that's spoken. Who's, who's improved on this in the 2,000 years since Jesus spoke these words? Who's improved on the foundation scriptures that tell us to not kill and, and, and not covet, which leads to all types of works of the flesh. Who's ever improved on those things? Who's ever improved that love the Lord and love one another and do unto others as you would have done unto you? Who's improved on, on all that in the whole history and the whole timeline of civilization? This is the way. It's the truth and the life. And nothing else suffices. All right, let's go to the book of Exodus. We're going back to the book of Exodus, chapter 17. We're coming to the kind of the centerpiece, if you would. Centerpiece of our study. And uh, what's going on at this time? Well, just recall to mind the whole Exodus example. The state of Israel is not good. They're wandering through a wilderness. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> much as we do, searching for a place prepared of the Father, as uh, the seed of Abraham, they were on their 40-year pilgrimage, and uh, the gospel speaks to us through the, the word of all their experience, so taking all those things into account. Let's go to Exodus 17, and we're going to read from verse 4, as they're uh, wandering through the wilderness of sin with the capital S. You can see that in the first verse of Exodus 17. I referred to it earlier. We're wandering through a wilderness of sin. Uh, metaphorically speaking, they wandered through a wilderness of sin, both metaphorically and in actuality, uh, along their journeys. And there was a condition where there was no water for the people to drink. What's the problem? They limited God. They limited God. Well, there's no water to drink. So the complaining starts up and so forth, brings up this condition, and we'll read it at verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. Here, they saw the miracles of God. They saw the deliverance. They saw the mountain, the smoke and the fire, and it did quake when the law was delivered. They saw all these things, and still they come to this condition. Well, that's a, that's a statement on uh, human nature and so forth and what's within. You've got to build upon the rock. All right, so instead of building upon the rock, they were ready to throw rocks at Moses. They're almost ready to do that. And I have no doubt that that was truth. When you read the whole Exodus account, that these things take place. So Moses was chagrined, to say the least. They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go, oh, take up the rod of God in your hand. Right. Such as it was at the Red Sea, oh, thank the Lord. What can be done when God's power, when the scepter of rule is in his hand? Take it up, take it in thy hand. The rod, uh, 
that was later placed in the Ark of the Covenant, taken, uh, take thy hand and go. Behold, at verse 6 now, we're in Exodus 17, 6 verse now. Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. Now I've spoken of this many a time. God knew where the water was, in the cliff side there, and the, and the type of shale rock, and it was the fissures within the rock, and water could flow with it. Within it, God knew where the water was, and so strike the, strike the rock in order that water would come out of it that the people would be able to drink. So uh, God knew where the water was, and there it was uh, within the cliff side and within the rock, it's springing up just below the, uh, the surface of the, of the stone. And it was a type of soft rock. Again, you know, it's not like a, like, like a Nerf ball. You can't bang your head upon it. Just uh, some rocks like granite are very hard. This uh, rock would fall apart if you hit it hard enough. So God instructed Moses to do so. And he did do so. He did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Well, that's an essential question. That brings up a question. Is the Lord among us or not? He's among us this day. Amen. 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 And that within the Lord's presence, there's a foreshadowing of future events. As God measures out these things, the timing and the approach has all to do with these things. As the Almighty speaks to us by the patterns and parallels of the past. Uh, chief example, Ruth of Moab is a good name to bring up in talking about those things. For Ruth types the Gentile church. So there's a pattern and a type that we want to draw out of the scriptures here. As a Ruth of Moab was, she was, she was married uh, into the faith. She wouldn't turn back from it. Uh, Boaz became a type of Lord of the Harvest within her life. It's a love story that leads to uh, to the master of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, which all parallels the coming of Christ. So there's things to be found within Scripture that are yea and amen. They are precious to us. So by, by type, uh, again, I quoted Ecclesiastes 1.9 earlier, the thing that's been is a thing that shall be. These are foundational to all that God has for us, as every scriptural pathway is set in place to get you to Calvary, to get you to that birth of Bethlehem, to get you at the hill of Golgotha. Is the Lord among us or not? He's with us. Amen. He's going to get us where we're going in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. amen. So place no limitations on the Holy One of Israel. That's essential. Is he Emmanuel? Is he God with us or is he not? In, in, God, in Jesus, when he spoke this, in God's viewpoint, he said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith upon the earth? That's working that same principle. Is God among us or not? Well, he, he knows he's existent. Will he find faith when he comes? Will he find faith upon the earth? So here, in this directive to smite the rock, take the rod and give it a good whack in Jesus' name, get that water that's just below the surface there, get it flowing out. It's just like this. It's just as when Jesus, who is the rock of our salvation, it's just as when he was to be smitten, beaten with rods, scorned, spat upon, but, it, but only once, and take note of that. He was smitten once. He suffered the cross once, suffered a, a, upon the cruel cross tree just that one time. Christ would live this out in actuality as the result of his rejection, which is Isaiah 53 brought to pass. Uh, the crucified Messiah, the rejected Messiah. All those things are, are within the scripture. Now, all those precedents that would come forth in the life of Christ. He would live those out, even as the, the wounded side. Out of his side would come the blood and the water. And then the battle entered into the next phase following that, the battle against death and hell. And on the third day he was raised up. The power of the third day came forth, and there's resurrection power. 
So amen. So in these scriptures, and, and the battle's been going on ever since in the rest of this chapter. If you go on and read it, it's a battle against Amalek, where they had to mo hold Moses' arms up. But thank God for the victory in Jesus' name. God's able to deliver. He expects us to do our part. We have to, he's building us up. He knows he's got to let us learn a few things on our own. It's all to our betterment and our spiritual health and well-being. So we have to lift him up. We have to make him our banner. That's in uh, the last, uh, uh, next to the last verse of this very same chapter. He's Jehovah Nisi. His God is our banner. We have to lift him up. We have to be soldiers of the cross. We have to do our part, build up the house of our spirit. But thank the Lord, but know that he is always our standard. He's that which we uphold. So here at the, the rock at Horeb, it's smite the rock and thus it was done. All right, now let's go to chapters, uh, chapter 20 of the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 20, and we're going to read from the seventh verse. Know this, that our God is with us, and we call his presence into our midst whenever we gather together, whenever we speak faith, whenever we, it is that we speak to the rock of our salvation, God builds faith. And sure, that you, you know, the Lord could give us visible ev evidence. If he wanted to show himself this day, yes. He could appear in, in, the, in any town, USA, and uh, there you go. Well, God exists, there he is, sure he could do that. But that's not the way to build the type of faith that was once delivered to the saints. Yeah. This is a better way. This shows up, this gets to the heart and soul of things. This gets down to who you are, the visible evidence, it'll, it'll mask that. God will show you things, amen, through his spirit that will bring us to the place where ignorance and darkness of this world get swept aside. God's looking for quality. And just visible, recognizing visible evidence doesn't do that. So God put this in place in order to develop our spirit. Amen. To get us in one accord with his word and act according to his will. So here we find the pattern uh, within Numbers chapter 20. Just uh, what we will find here. We're going to find a pattern of the rejected Messiah as it pleased the Lord to portend those things by example. He's the, our spiritual drink. You're going to drink out of the rock. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that we read of. All right, now recalling also Exodus 17, which we just read. The rock was to be struck once as Christ was smitten just that once. But now it's speak to the rock, which is, the, of course, the words of our title here in Numbers chapter 20. Where it's speak to the rock as these things are always a test. It's always to get us one step further in Jesus' name. All right, Numbers chapter 20 from verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. See, back it was smite the rock in the first instance. Now we're, we're making progress here, right? Now I've got something else. I've got a further step to go. Now I want you to speak to the rock. All right, so speak unto the rock before their eyes, because this is going to glorify his name when it's yeah. done and everything's in order. And God's name gets glorified by obedience and by the following of his word. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Yeah. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and, and he said unto them, and just before we read that, know this, uh, Moses was a human being. And 40 years of wandering through the wilderness and putting up with the quarreling tribes of Israel, it'll do things to a person's psyche. But it, all the things that we go through in this world, you know, we, he had mood swings and, and so forth and, and low moments, but thank the Lord the high places are much greater than the low moments. This will be one of those low moments, but we'll, we'll learn from it. Peter had a low moment when he denied Christ three times, but it tore him down to build him back up, right? Because when he understood those things, amen, it did him good in the end. 
So uh, these people, they're just every bit as human as we are. They went through all the types of things we go through. All right. So Moses comes before the rock. And, and they're, at this time, I have no doubt they're ready to stone him uh, once again. All right. And he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Well, now, it's God's job to fetch water out of the rock. Not place it upon yourself. God is glorified by obedience to him. He was given a directive to do it this way, to speak to the rock. So he says, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, because it was there, hiding just under the surface in the, in the rock. The water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now that's sobering when we read it. But my, so here, here's a, when God says to speak to the rock, you speak to the rock. Whatever state of mind that you're in, however your disappointments are, however tired you are on that particular day, uh, the obedience to the word is always the paramount thing. So Moses, because of the condition of 40 years in the wandering, and putting up with the complaints. Now, would any of us have done any better than Moses? I don't think so. He put up with a lot along the way. But in this, in this place, he went beyond what he should have. That is true. Because of the complaints of his fellow Hebrews, in a fit of anger, he disobeys the speak to the rock commandment and instead strikes the rock. It's not as before when it was strike the rock. He followed the obediently. Now it's speak to the rock. So it's different in this instance. All right, so we put all these things together. Although Moses had transgressed to this point, still retained his position, he was still Moses, he made a very human mistake. He's going to have to learn from it. But because of this, he could not go into the promised land. When it's time to speak to the rock and have your feet upon the rock of Christ Jesus, you've got to do just that. You've got to do just that. Follow the Lord's commandment. And because uh, God would let him see the promised land from afar. And Moses pleaded to let him go in. Because, but because of the strivings at the rock and because of his uh, temporary disobedience there. In Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 26, uh, he pleaded with the Lord to let him go in with the people. He brought them this far, wanted to go in. And God told him, don't, don't speak to me anymore about this. It's a closed subject. You won't go into the land. But he got him there. He got him there. Amen. He got him there. So thank the Lord for those things. And it was an instrument of the salvation of Israel to that point. But here's our spiritual point. When it's time to speak to the rock, you don't strike it. Yeah. That's, that's obedience. God has a purpose in everything that he does. And Moses was just as human as anybody else. All right. So that our time to speak to the rock is right now. It's time to speak faith as Jesus had to be stricken and smitten and rejected first. He was smitten. But then following, now it's glorifying the name of God by the word spoken. Jesus was smitten once. He under, endured the cross once. But after that, where he's smitten once, now it's time to speak faith. It's time to speak to the rock. Just a, it, it, It's the speak the word only principle, in effect, that came out of the centurion of Matthew chapter 8, who said, speak, he said, speak the word only, because he was a man understood authority, and he had love for the nation of Israel, and he, and he had respect unto it, and he understood authority, and said, speak the word only, my servant shall be healed with Jesus. Marveled at. It's time to speak to the rock. Now's our time to understand God's word. Now's our time to stand on the rock, Christ Jesus. He was smitten once, but now it's time to speak faith because he has arisen to die no more. In Ephesians chapter 6, the living water 
that the word is, was offered to the Samaritan woman. You recall that Jacob's well was here amongst the Exodus people in the books of Moses. It's here right now. Jesus would be smitten once. He would suffer the indignities of the cross, but he arose to die no more. So it was strike the rock, the rock of Christ Jesus, he'd be smitten once. But after that, oh, faith by the speaking the word. Faith would come forth in perfect type. So bless the Lord for all that he has given us, amen, yeah, amen, through the word. It's here right now. It's here right now, this word of faith with which we pre preach. It's here in the life of Christ that was given in many foundation scriptures. Obedience to the word of God, it's always through his voice. Sometimes it's a still, small voice. Sometimes it's a voice of thunder. And Jesus, it was in the likeness of sinful flesh, but ye, yet he himself, he was without sin, who dwelt among us. It was the time to speak, and obedience to those things is uh, the greatest thing that we can ever do, as obedience is so much better than the sacrifices of the law. And to listen to the word of God, which Moses failed in that respect. He didn't ultimately fail, but he was human. He had a little stumbling along the way. But thank the Lord. But oh, obedience to the word of God, it's better than all the sacrifices of the law that could be given. And Jesus was obedient even unto the cross. So thank, thank the Lord for those things. The word of God is here. It's in these foundational scriptures. As Almighty God, El Shaddai, he knew it was what was coming. He'd be smitten, but he would arise to be smitten no more. He's Lord of all. So these patterns emerge to show God's forethought, his spirit of prophecy that is in the very testimony of Jesus himself, as according to Revelation 19.10. So we give testimonies about what God's done in our lives. This is what God has done with his life, the life of truth that's within him, the life of the eternal scriptures that was within. He's given us his testimony. His testimony is to tell us who he is and what he does, and then he'll go ahead and perform that which he has promised. And it's all there. It's all within scripture. Don't be ignorant of the rock that is Christ Jesus. I'm, and I'm preaching to the choir. That's a good thing. I like preaching to the choir. Amen. The choir, the choir needs encouragement along the way too. So thank, thank the Lord. But preaching to those that don't believe, don't be ignorant of the cross of Christ. It's all written. It's all written. Psalms 22 gives you a perfect picture of the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, Isaiah 53, the scourging and the trial of it all in Pilate's Hall contained there. Resurrection. You won't suffer your Holy One to see corruption out of Psalm 1610. Thus he arose. The birth of Bethlehem, that's written. It's written for us there in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Betrayal of Judas, Scripture, God's got it covered. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12. The eventual seeing of Jesus and the restoration of the original word seed faith. To the house of Israel, that's seen in Zechariah chapter 12, 10th verse, surrounding portion there. It's there. It's there. It always was. It always was in the mind of Almighty God. Now it's written for us Amen. in order to give us the victory. How do you win any victory? By saying, it is written. Yeah. By quoting the words that Jesus spoke. By believing them. Take them to heart. So thank the Lord. So we're going to take it all to heart here out of Ephesians chapter 6. As the grateful, great and dreadful day of his appearing, it draws closer. And this is time, our time to either draw nearer to the, our precious Lord, to his precious bleeding side, or to turn away, if that's your choice. But you will choose one way or another. You will have to decide who you are in this life, as choices are set before us. So here in Ephesians chapter 6, upon taking on the armaments of God for uh, the whole armor of God we uh, come to in verse 13, we're going to read down from uh, the armaments of God chapter from verse 18, which is delivered to us by saying, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, wherever they may be, here in the Americas, Africa, Asia, Europe, the Australian continent, wherever it may be, wherever faith is found, making supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, to speak to the rock. Speak to the rock as according to faith. Speak of the rock, Christ Jesus. Pray for me that I be able to do so in the manner which I should. To make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds within earthly constraints and sometimes an actual prisoner uh, depending on the particular circumstance of that point in time. I'm an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We should speak as we ought. We should speak to the rock of our salvation by speaking faith and with holiness of truth on our side and doing those things we can act according to his commandments. There was a time to strike the rock. There was a time for Christ to be stricken. But now it's speak to the rock. Now it's time to speak faith. It's time to speak of resurrection power. And thus it comes forth. And with holiness of truth on our side, well, there's, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than a word fitly spoken. You know what that's like? I feel a proverb coming on. Amen. Thank the Lord. It's like this. It's a word fitly spoken. It's like apples of gold in pictures of silver. What a wonderful thing it is to speak faith, to speak of the rock, Christ Jesus, to do as he commands. And if he says, speak to the rock and water will come forth, that, that's what we're to do in Jesus' name. That'll get us inside the promised land. Amen. Thank the Lord. And that does uh, so very much. And wh why does it take so much for these things to come forth? Why does it take all this prophetic content uh, to come forth? Well, these things have to prove themselves. They have to prove themselves out on the world stage. Remember this, in order to bring all things to bear. Remember this, this scripture was spoken to it here of late. The very accuser himself, by titular description, son of the morning, the anointed cherub that covers was perfect in all his ways until what? Until iniquity was found with him, which probably has to do with our creation. If it was a point before that, the Lord knows. But certainly the fact of our creation or the plan and the unveiling of God's plan to bring this all forth had uh, so much to do with it within our scriptures. Uh, all the spiritual evidence points that way. He was perfect in all his ways until that moment came when iniquity was found within. God brings all these things to pass in order to find out where iniquity is, even if it looks perfect in all its ways. God will bring it forth. That's the wisdom of Almighty God. Don't be ignorant of that fact. Avail yourself of the wisdom of the Almighty God. It's all there to find faith, and it's always there to deliver mercy. That's who God is. That's his nature, to be merciful. He's not willing that anyone should perish, but that all would come to him for life. And he's leading us. He's leading you right now to heed the call and to do as he commands. Let's stand in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord for that which is given to us, words of faith. We're going to speak. Amen. We're going to speak by prayer. We're going to speak by song. Amen. Brothers and sisters may come forward. Thank the Lord. We're going to sing, Lead Me to That Rock that is higher than I. Thank the Lord for the worship. Bless the Lord on high. Thank the Lord for those that gather around and worship him. Don't be too anxious to, you know, just to get out the door. Amen. Church isn't over yet. Thank the Lord. The praise goes ever onward. Thank the Lord. Somebody has to go. They have scheduled me, sure. But 
Thank the Lord. Be glad for what God gives. This is our time to praise him. This is time to speak faith and to have God's word written within our hearts. Thank the Lord. But this isn't just a church service. This is sharing the inheritance of the saints in light. That's what this is. This is sharing God's word. This is sharing his glory. This is shining the light of the new creation. This is sharing in all God is. This is the sharing of that which is eternal. This is the sharing of that which ever was and is right now and always will be. This is the rock of Christ Jesus upon which we stand. And we thank him for it. So amen. So we're going to bow our heads and pray. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his holy word, Sister Merriman. Play it through. You're going to lead us to that rock that is higher than I. Thank you, dear Lord. Father, you have indeed been a shelter for us. Father, you're our strong and high tower. Father, we're here to do our part and be soldiers of the cross and be set upon the watchtower of your keeping, Father, and to observe the signs and the times, Father, and be aware and be awake and be watchful and be alive upon the promise of the Almighty God. Thank you. And watch, therefore. Thank you, dear Lord. We're set upon the watch, looking for these things to come forth, and you've given us all that we need, Father, to be firmly founded upon truth, the truth that ever was and always shall be. Father, we thank you for the rock of Christ Jesus upon which we stand. Where else is there to stand? Everything else is going to sink. Everything else is going to crumble. Everything else is going to burn up. But your word, it abides forever, Father, and we're with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the eternal words that lift us up in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, dear Lord, for the light that you've implanted within, Lord. Just lead us onward and for the sake of your name, Father, forgive you all the glory. And Father, for those in need of prayer, many ser serious situations, uh, matters of, of health, whether it's in the mind, the body, or the soul, or the spirit, Lord, you're there as a healing presence. We lift up your name. You are our banner. You're our battle flag that we rally around. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just praise you for your healing presence to be among us this day. Lord, just make it real within our hearts that we may speak faith and do the work of the Almighty God in Jesus' name, Father. Lord, be just with us this day. Through your blessed name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for those that hear the word of the Lord and obey his name. Amen. Thank the Lord and all the glory of it. Why don't you lead me to that rock? Why don't you lead me to that rock?